that's uh, Nelson's column, just on the way into St James's again. Gotta pick up a couple of cigar boxes. And uh, I'm actually gonna go into Dunhill and see what they say about the whole Dunhill furore. I'm hearing uh, conflicting reports about the whole Dunhill story. My initial reaction was, my initial thought rather, was it was just the supplier that imports into uh, into America rather than Dunhill itself. I don't think there's going to be a problem with Dunhill per se. Um, so I'm just going to find out about that. Although they're just a Dunhill concession, so I don't know if they'll know much more than anybody else. But we'll see what they say. Anyway, I'll catch you a bit later. Uh, I'm at Dunhill's now, 1A St. James's. Um, I'm going to ask him about the Dunhill tobacco, see if he knows anything about it. I see they've got the new uh, HRM 54, the Magnum 54. A really, really nice Vitola. Um, I find them a little bit too young. The ones that I bought from Zurich, were, I tried one of them, it was really harsh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to ask Robert now, see if he knows anything about <laughs> it. Thank you. Robert, Dunhill tobacco, pipe tobacco. Have you heard anything about it on the grapevine? Well, this is a funny thing. I've, I've heard all kinds of rumours, but uh, until I've heard anything official, then no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> a real Englishman's response there. Okay. Well, um, Robert was uh, being diplomatic there, but um, I don't think he, he really knows for sure, but he, he says that we should hear very, very soon with a little bit more definition of exactly what's going on. Um, but um, I asked him, um, a couple of things. Number one, whether it had anything to do with the relationship between the company that imports it into America and Dunhill. And he said that he doesn't think it's got anything to do with that. And um, Dunhill itself, he said, is owned by the American Tobacco Company or something like that. I can't remember the name exactly. And that company owns this shop. This is, um, this is um, although it's it's got Dunhill on the door, it's 1A St. James. It, it, it's not Dunhill itself, but it's owned by that same parent company which uh, runs Dunhill, that uh, American tobacco company. And um, and this is their main base, their outlet. The outlet, this is like their, their flagship outlet, if you like, for Dunhill tobacco. So you've got the cig Dunhill cigars, Dunhill pipe tobacco, and Dunhill cigarettes. So that's essentially what this is here. Um, but um, he's also, he says he's anxious to really know what's going on and uh, he says he, re he expects to get an answer very soon um, I just thought I'd mention this one this is the 1907 I think he called this the Titan um, I had one of these the other day and I was very very impressed with it it's a really nice cigar and a good price I think for comparatively compared to Cubans it's a good price it's about uh, 15 pounds I think there um, I really I must say I come here to this shop more than any of the others on the street. There's three tobacconists here on this road. You've got uh, Davidoff, JJ Fox, and this place. Um, JJ Fox has got, for me, the only draw on that one is, is that it's got a, um, a a big lounge upstairs where you can just literally sit, or, sit down and relax. And you can do the same here as well, but it's pretty small. There's six chairs and, you know, people walk through when they come into the human door. So you just don't feel as relaxed. You feel a little bit on edge sometimes. Um, but I guess that's down to personal sort of uh, hobbies and uh, confidences, I guess. Um, so, yeah, just a question of what I'm going to have today. Um, kind of thinking about the... Uh, you've got the Capuletas, which is this year's one. And I've got one in my humidor, but I haven't tried one yet. And you've got the same kind of idea, slightly longer Vitola. Um, from 2013. So logic would say to go for the 2013, um, but I'm gonna ask Robert when he has a second to pop back in. Yeah, you've got a fair amount of New World cigars there. Oil. Aroma de Cuba. Oh, this is something else. Ro Aroma de Carib. Me or more. I guess that means Caribbean. I've seen that one before. Got some Brickhouse, Oliva. And you get the Melania, that's the double Figurado. It's a Serie B. Also, I've not seen that one before. Very nice. 
We have a nice box press Padron, anniversary of 1964, Figurado, very nice. Edging room, Alec Bradley. I've seen a, a proliferation of Alec Bradley cigars at the moment on the, on the internet and various sites that I buy from. They seem to be uh, loads of them coming up quite cheap. I hope that doesn't mean that they're planning on a demise with their new uh, FDA regulations and selling off their stock. And uh, you're running the mill, Cubans. The bands on these are faded because these are just uh, showroom. They don't sell these ones. The rest of them are all boxed up. I had one of those the other day. Very, very nice. In actual fact, today I think I'm going to have a an open series. Um, I want to see what they're about. They're supposed to be a milder version of the Monte Cristos, so I think I'm going to try one of those. All right, guys, catch you later. Here we have some of the pipe tobaccos. Good selection. Even though they don't sell it after those jars, right, Robert? No, that's right. That's Just for show. To have a look at, see the cut of the tobacco. Oh, I see. So we got the uh, various pipe tobaccos. And cigarettes. I'll just show them some of this stuff. Beautifully laid out shop. Of the humidors. I've had my eye on this one for a while, but it's got decent capacity. Lovely, really heavy, solid. In the middle, but I haven't actually gone for it. Right, it's time to pay up. Well, I've just started this uh, open regatta. From Monte Cristo. And uh, the main purpose of this one is I wanted to see if there's any real difference between the open and the regular lines from Monte Cristo. Um, I've had um, one of the juniors in the past, but that was a long, long time ago. And um, when I spoke to Robert about it, he didn't really see any significant difference. And I asked him what the principle of the Open Series was. And he says that there's supposed to be some um, sort of benefit in smoking them outdoors, playing golf, that kind of idea. Hence the word Open, as in the Open Golf Tournaments. Um, for me, um, the start off, the initial first third has been a lot brighter. Uh, well, I'd say a lot, but certainly significantly brighter and, and, and more of a brighter peppery kind of flavour um, than the regular, say, the Monte Number no. 2 or the Mini um, the Petit Number no. 2. Um, but um, certainly not very strong, not overpowering at this stage. It's like a white pepper kind of flavour. A little bit of a coffee finish. Um, and um, we'll see how we go. It's, it's definitely hasn't got the, at this stage, hasn't got the depth, the earthy leatheriness um, of the uh, regular number two so far. So um, we shall see how we go. I must say that out of all the shops that I go to though, I really do feel at home here. Um, I find the hospitality here is second to none. Um, I really enjoy coming here. Robert and both, Robert and Tom, really, really easy going people, get a nice cup of coffee. And um, it's just a very easy place to relax and I can't recommend it enough. Hey everybody, just on the way home. Um, just coming into the last third of this uh, Monte Cristo open regatta. And I have to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised. Um, although Robert um, said um, in the dining room shop he didn't really see the uh, significance of the open one compared to the regular line um, he said to me wait till I'm a couple of you know maybe halfway through the cigar and you'll see it starts to get deeper and stronger but I've got to say that for me I haven't had that experience with this particular cigar um, I've got to say that um, I'm finding it to be milder um, it still has the Monty flavor but um, it's definitely for me it's definitely has less of the depth, less of the sort of the deep um, leathery sort of uh, earthy flavors. Um, and without a doubt, it's a brighter flavor. The pepper is more white, what people call a white pepper. 
as opposed to a black pepper. Um, and for me, I think as a daytime smoke, it's very, very good. Um, when you don't want to have something too heavy, you don't want to get knocked to a six. There is a little bit of a nick hit, but nothing fantastic. I've not had ma a major amount to eat so far today. Um, so probably it's, it's, I'm feeling it a little bit more, but um, for me, it's got very nice flavors. It's got good Cuban sort of richness to it, but not heavily so. Um, so for me, if I was to interpret what open means, being an open regatta, for me, my interpretation based on this smoke is that it's a good anytime smoke, even if you're outdoors. And when you're outdoors, you don't want to get hit by nicotine. If you're playing golf, you don't want to get hit by nicotine. Or if any outdoor activity, you certainly don't want to get hit and start getting wobbly and feeling a bit drowsy. Um, and for me, that's what it means. And therefore, it's got a bit of the punch taken out of it. And that makes it, for me, an ideal daytime, morning, afternoon smoke. talking too much and it's gone out it's the first time it's gone out and I'm not really finished so it's pretty good construction is very good and um, size wise I haven't actually checked the Vitola but it looks to me like a four four and a half inch by about a 48 ring gauge something like that it's not quite a 50 um, but um, it's actually a very nice size in terms of um, it's a quick smoke relatively you know if depending on your on your cadence it's um, you know three quarters of an hour to an hour you can make it last longer um, but um, I really like it, it's good. So I'm gonna just carry on the rest of it and see how we go. I'll let you see a little bit more of this, although I've shown it a few many more times, many times before the road. The roads around here, really historic kind of architecture. And we're in the square mile of London, the central square mile, so it's always interesting. Sure, what that uh, bus is in front of. If you can read it, it says Drowning Street, Ladbroke Grave, and Death Knoll Green. Um, and that's obviously a take on well known uh, destinations being Downing Street, Ladbroke Grove, and Beth Knoll Green. Um, so that's probably something to do with London Dungeons or something like that, or some kind of horror tour. Uh, hence the colour being black. Not seen that before. You got Hamleys on the right there, the toy shop. Famous uh, toy store, multi level toy store. Been there a few times with my kids. Right, I'm going to just turn the camera around. So that's what's left of it. That's the uh, open band. So I'm going to take that off. Honestly, I don't know why they can't get it right, the Cubans, when it comes to the bands, the seal, the glue on the band. Plenty of smoke. As I was saying, construction-wise, it's very nice. It's a, a Bellicoso or Figurado, whatever you want to call it, the, the top, the torpedo top, which I do like. The uh, Petit number two, it's also got uh, a tapered cap. I do enjoy that. Um, I should have really bought a couple more just to get an idea of these, um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to try these. Anyway, um, I'm going to call it a day here, so I can concentrate on my driving. Um, but uh, highly recommended. Really nice cigar during the daytime. Good daytime cigar. Um, and that's the uh, Monte Cristo Open Regatta. I used to drive past there quite often. I used to think that was the Bank of England for some reason, but I think that was when I was a kid. And those pillars, the structure seemed to somehow remind me of the Bank of England, but it's definitely not. It's definitely a church of some kind. I don't know which one though. Souls Langham Place uh, Church. Hey everybody, um, 
later on in the evening now and um, a couple of things I wanted to show you one that I got in the post today I actually did record a, um, a box opening earlier on but um, I was actually not at home I was on location um, and the lighting was really rubbish so I'm not going to bother with that one it's a pipe I got from uh, Daniel from ND Pipes um, ordered it last week and it came no, when did I order it? I think the end of the week before, possibly, or well, the beginning of last week. Anyway, um, I missed it on Friday. I think they tried to deliver it. I picked it up today. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you that first. I've already shown it on IG, so you may have seen it. Green Cumberland. Beautiful horn. Yeah, it might be better with that. Nice Cumberland stem there. Some beautiful contrast green. Look at that. That's stunning. Some nice wood inserts there. Look at the green. It's a beautiful pipe. These pipes are not cheap, I'll grant you that. And I don't imagine I'll be getting a whole range of these, but this was just. Uh, Something special. It's really lightweight as well. So, actually, just going to give that a quick way. grams it's really light very happy with that okay so uh, continuing from the various uh, bits of discussion regarding Dunhill um, anyway I, I uh, bought some cigars there which I'll just give you a share with you quickly I bought a Cohiba Robusto which I've never tried I've had the Siglo 4 it's got a beautiful aroma Um, he says, Robert says that this is the classic Cohiba. For him, this is the best Cohiba cigar, so I took his word for it. And then we took the Capuleta um, Edition Limitada 2013. It's a Romeo and Juliet. There was a 2016 one out, but um, I think I've got one of those in the Numidor, but I figured if you can get 2013, get 2013. Well, it's still there, so I've got a couple of those. Um, and... I also bought a box for setting down uh, for investment, some cohibas, not for smoking officially. Plus, he was very kind and he let me grab some empty boxes. I was really amazed, some of them are really top, top quality, so I just thought I'd show them to you. They're really nice, colourful, artistic, but not only that, they're just a shame to throw away. This is uh, the My Father La Bijou, 1922. This was the number one cigar last year, I think, or 2014, possibly, um, on the Fushinado. But look at how this is made. It's got the a nice insert there to give you a good seal, and you can feel it closing over that seal. So that's pretty airtight. And um, just stick a bevita in there, and you've got a, a humidor. I mean, it's just amazing. So I'm very happy with that one. Basically, all my loose Cubans, I want to put them in the box and then put that box in the top of the door because they're not really getting much of a cedar influence. And this one is a Quattro Cinco Hoya in the Caraguio. And look at that box, it's just amazing. Beautifully put together, cedar. And it's just uh, the quality of the box is just unbelievable. Again, that really closes tight. So, no reason not to use it. It's a shame for them not to be used. And then I've got more of a standard box, which is a Partagus. I think it might be a bit too big. But it's just, um, just good to store some other bits and trinkets in it. A couple of bits of cedar. Even just to put that in one of those, um, you can buy those big Bavita bags, which 
just put that in straight into it and seal it up. You're good to go. Leave it down. You can set down your cigars for a while. So that was today. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I'm not sure what I'm going to smoke tonight. Um, we'll see how we go. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, various clips on the way at um, downhills and on the way back and here at home. Um, in terms of the whole downhill situation, um, Robert basically said that it's um, going to become very clear very soon. Um, so if I hear anything further, I will certainly um, update you guys. Have a great one. Catch you on the next one.